everyone, today we're going to be talking about the Aboxys Piccolo. It's a point of care chemistry analyzer. It uses a hundred microliters of specimen and uh, you can do this as CLIA wave testing or higher complexity testing in class. Obviously ours would be higher complexity testing. The CLIA wave tests use um, the green top tube, which is a lithium heparin tube not a sodium heparin for the complete metabolic panel because it says no sodium heparin. If we did use sodium heparin in a complete metabolic panel, it would falsely elevate the sodium level in the patient's plasma. So that is why it's requiring you not to use a sodium heparin. So for the CLIA wave testing, obviously the green top would be perfect for that. Uh, we are going to be using a red top today. It does look a little bit hemolyzed, so before we run it, we are going to pull it up out of the tube to make sure it truly is hemolyzed. And yes, it's slightly hemolyzed, so uh, we'll still run it because that's okay. We just can make a comment in the LIS that it is hemolyzed. All right, so when you pull these reagent discs out of the refrigerator they are able to be used right away you don't need to bring them to room temperature or anything like that uh, it, just notice that when once you open this foil package you do need to use it within 20 minutes there are powder reagents on the in, outside here and they are light sensitive because guess what this analyzer uses a spectrophotometer inside to shine the light through this disc and see uh, what the light absorbance is or reflectance uh, when it's measuring the actual analytes. So with that said, you need to make sure not to touch the top part of this disc uh, when you're trying to put the specimen inside. Uh, you don't want to get bubbles. I don't know if you can see that. So I tried to do a video earlier, a few minutes ago, and uh, I got so caught up in videoing that I, I messed up. Um, I cut in between the video and I allowed bubbles to get into my pipette tip and accidentally put some in there. So we're not gonna run this one, but I wanted to show you. So you don't touch the top here. These barcodes around the sides make it so that as soon as you put it on the analyzer, it's going to run QC and calibration to make sure that your results are very accurate. And uh, the specimen is put into this little hole where that one arrow is, and you tilt it when you do so. It goes up to, it should go up to this uh, window here, this line. So there's two, there are two little arrowheads right there, and that's the fill line. So you want your specimen to go all the way to the fill line. This specimen does not, all right? So see the line, it does not go to that line. So that's why we're not using it. And it has bubbles, so that's why we're not using it. On the back here, it does have the uh, expiration date of the reagent. So if the reagent is expired and you notice that on the foil packet, it will give you an error, co error code when you put it on the instrument and it will not run it. So you'd have to get a new one. So we are going to open this now. The screen that is showing on the analyzer in the background is the home screen. As soon as you turn it on with this button, the screen will light up and it will tell you uh, that it's calibrating, sorry, it's running internal QC and that uh, it has to warm up itself first. And you'll automatically hear those that fan going to make sure that the computer inside this analyzer stays cool, which is very important. Okay, so this is what it looks like without having added any specimen. Notice the window is completely clear. It's not smudged, so that's perfect. This is the fill window. This is the fill line. Inside here, there is also 
Um, there's also diluent. So when the specimen gets put on and it spins and all that, uh, it will automatically do dilutions to make sure that your result is going to be measurable and be able to be reported out. If it is not, if it is too high of a result, then it will have an asterisk next to it. Okay, so I'm filling, oh my goodness. I'm trying to make it so that you all can see this, okay. So I have started filling it, I'm tilting. It's not focusing very well. This is so hard to do while you're filming. Oh my goodness. All right. So we have reached the fill line. Woo! All right. So there you go. It's completely full to the fill line. Now I'm going to press analyze. It opens the little drawer. There's a little um, kind of like a lip here. It looks like a flying saucer. You put the little lip inside the hole. Okay, so we're placing it in, making sure it's flush. It sits kind of weird, but it naturally does that, so that's okay. Do not push this drawer yourself. Hit the close button. Okay, so I'm hitting the close button, and it's going to automatically analyze it. So it's going to run the... Um, it's going to run the QC and everything first. So this is not a control that I'm running. I'm going to be running a patient. And I'm going to say that it's patient four. I'm done. And so now it's gonna analyze the sample. It even tells you what the, um, the test is that you're running. So this is patient four. It's analyzing the sample. It's running a complete metabolic panel. If I wanted to, I could cancel it by pressing that button, but I don't wanna do that. So I will get back to you when we get to the end. All right, so we're at the end here. It just said it's saving the results and now the analysis is complete. I open the drawer to get the specimen out. It says to analyze additional sample, load a new disc. So I'm gonna take the old one out Notice all the different colors, which we'll look at in just a second. So we're going to close. And we can print those results out by going to the file here. And we can do last disk because we just ran it. And then it gives us the information about when it was run, the patient ID number was four, the lot number of the disk and the serial number. And then it shows us all this different information. So we can go and look at all of it this way. This is great because I want to talk to you about the hemolysis and everything. Okay. And we could just do it on the screen, but we can also print it. So let's print it. We're printing. And what do we want? Do we want all of the bits of the result? Do we want an error report? Whatever. So we're just going to um, we're going to print all, and it comes out the back. All right. So when it's done, it'll have everything about the QC as well for your daily class stuff you don't need to print all of it um, I would prefer that you don't so that we save paper because this is a lot just print the results because look how long this tape is <laughs> this is really long but I wanted to show you how everything works on this analyzer this is not good okay all right so if you see here, we notice that we have these warning symbols here, the explanation marks, which means that uh, it says re confirm low recoveries. Well, here are your, 
here are your reference ranges, okay? And since we knew that our specimen was slightly hemolyzed, which I ran for you on purpose to show you this, hemolysis is shown here. This analyzer looks at the three in, uh, indices before it starts. So um, you have the hemolysis, you have lipemia, and icterus. And those are the three um, the three qualities that are going to interfere with uh, your different testing depending on what panel you're using. So if we're thinking about hemolysis, we're thinking about the stuff that is inside the red cell that once the red cell gets uh, burst open or lysed or hemolyzed, whatever you want to call that, um, it releases all of its guts out into the patient's uh, liquid portion of their blood. Okay, so what would have been compartmentalized in a cell previously is exposed to the and released into the actual liquid part, which would cause you to have falsely elevated results. So notice this person has an increased potassium because potassium is mainly in the red cell and now it's out of reference range. If a doctor saw this, they would treat a patient differently than if they know or if they knew that the specimen was actually hemolyzed because then, you know, that's not necessarily an accurate result. So when we put a hemolysis result um, or a hemolysis footnote in with the result of a specimen, the clinician, the nurses, and the doctors know then to uh, interpret this with caution because there was... Uh, there was an interference, so to speak, uh, due to the quality of the specimen. So also down here, like AST would be falsely elevated as well because that's in the red cell as well. So uh, that's the kind of thing you can think about when you're looking at these, okay? And, and then we can go down here and we see that this is the same patient, it's the same patient, I think I accidentally uh, printed it out twice. Okay, and then here's the QC part. All right, so it says that our uh, QC was good. If you look at what the, what the results were, it even tells you what wavelength um, the QC was measured at using the spectrophotometer inside of the analyzer and the acceptable minimum is 50, and the chemistry QC that was run was 102, which is in the acceptable range, okay? And this is looking at um, more information that you don't necessarily need to know all of this, but uh, it continues on with the ability of the analyzer to run correctly, which is what QC does. Thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you next time.